Hi, welcome to Business Influencers. Hope everyone is having a great week. Again, we want to thank you, the listeners, each and every week joining us here at Business Influencers with Tell Radio. We are so excited again to report that the show continues to climb in ratings because of you. And we are committed each and every week to bringing subject matter experts to help you scale your level of influence and take your brand and business to the next level. If you have any questions, regards to boosting your brand in business, feel free to reach out to us at chris at christophersalem.com or chris at sustainablesuccess.net. We'd be more than happy to assess your question, either either one of us from my team or one of our subject matter experts that we've had on the show. If it's specific to them, we'll make sure that that, that question gets addressed for you. Again, reach out to us at chris at christophersalem.com or chris at sustainablesuccess.net. We got a great show for you today, but our show is being brought to you today by Alumni Direct, a new social media community platform dedicated to bringing alumni together from all different generational types, an opportunity to rekindle old relationships and perhaps meet somebody new for the first time. This is a membership program, meaning that it takes all the noise out of social media and you have an opportunity now to meet people in a genuine, authentic way, and perhaps you may meet your next business partner, or land your next job. Again, this is a membership program, but very affordable, but with so many perks. They also have an athlete's corner for professional athletes. So check them out at alumnidirect.com. That's alumnidirect.com. As I mentioned, we got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about key to finding the right franchise. So if you ever thought about getting into business, but weren't sure how to go about starting a business from scratch and might require a little help. Well, we have the right person here for you. Someone that's going to really discuss all the ins and outs about franchising and what would be the right way to find the franchise that really relates to you. And um, we're going to be here with uh, Liam Hanley. And Liam Hanley it was a former fashion industry survivor, franchise owner, career ownership coach with the Entrepreneurial Source. He spent nearly 20 years in the apparel space working for J. Crew, Ralph Lauren, and Bonobos, I believe, if I said it correct. And he decided to leave that world and venture into the world of business ownership, purchasing his franchise in 2020. And he did not let COVID hold him back. As a career ownership coach, he has helped many people realize their dreams of of business ownership, uh, focusing on non-food franchising in a safe environment. And through a process of education, awareness, and discovery, he helps his clients to clarify their personal income, lifestyle, wealth, and and equity goals, and evaluate their options. So we're going to be learning more about Liam here. And without further ado, we welcome Liam Hanley to the show. Liam, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Chris. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing great. Well, we we are so excited to hear about you know franchising and business ownership and. So for the people that are listening, I mean, I would just ask, like, what would be some of the things that would maybe draw people to franchising and considering that as a form of business ownership uh, uh, over just starting a business from scratch? Yeah, um, great question. And also, I just wanted to to comment in case there's any of my fellow Bonobos employees. It's oh, been- yeah. But no, Bo, so if I, yeah. I, probably, I didn't want to torture it. <laughs> you did. You did it. You did. You did perfectly. But there was a whole video about that back in the day about how to say that. But <laughs> um, with regards to, you know, franchising, I think a, a lot of people who I speak with are experiencing a couple common things. I think it's fatigue in their career, corporate burnout, another word for it. Uh, a lot of my clients have been impacted by layoffs, downsizing, all of that, um, and are looking for a way to replicate or increase or surpass their prior income, potentially in the in, in the more private sector. Um, I think anyone who's looking for a change, tired of kind of working for the man, there's always a man out there, but uh, it's an opportunity to explore what self-sufficiency through business ownership looks like. Um, and, you know, with a specific focus on franchising, it's not the only space that I work within, but the largest portion of that. And I think, you know, why it's beneficial to have a coach like myself is that, you know, immediately when I say franchising, everyone thinks of Chick-fil-A, Subway, yeah, exactly. McDonald's. Um, those are very cost prohibitive franchises. They cost a lot to get into. Um, and there's a lot of overhead and carrying costs. There's a whole other sector of businesses that are, you know, a, a fraction of the cost to get up and running and can get you to where you want to be financially, personally, and uh, all of that. Uh, so that's kind of who I meet and a little bit about what I do. Great. 
What would you say, like, again, you know, you, you go a step beyond. You're not just trying – you're not looking just to match somebody – with a franchise for the sake of you really do a deep dive into really finding out what's really important to that person. You know, you look at, you look at it in a, from a holistic view, uh, standpoint and looking at where they are, why they're considering a franchise and what, what, you know, how do they what, would like to design their life around that? I guess that's where the career ownership yeah. coaching comes in. Talk a little bit about that and why that's so important. It's it's incredibly important because it, it it will dictate where the journey takes my clients. Right, business ownership is only one avenue that they can explore as they're at a point of career transition. Right, stay in the job market, maybe start their own business or or join an existing business <coughs> an existing business community. At the core, though, what we're working on is and working with are what are your individual needs. Right, it starts holistically. Let's talk about your goals across a couple of factors: income, right. Everyone's got bills, uh, you know, everyone wants to make more lifestyle. Lifestyle is, you know, work-life balance, location. Have you been relocated to Fargo and you don't want to be there? You want to be back on a coast, you know, and also wealth and equity. Those are components that are important as we're looking at not just the short, uh, the short year, but out years, five years, 10 years. Are you looking for something that you can build up? So the process really starts holistically with what's important to you across kind of those factors. What are you trying to uh, you know, what are you trying to fulfill in this space that a traditional job can't, right? Let's focus on some of those. Or what are your frustrations with your experience? Um, it's not super touchy-feely, but it is in a way, right? Let's talk and let's kind of dream a little bit about, you know, in an ideal world, how much money would you make? What would your Monday through Friday look like? You know, do you do you want to take summer Fridays year round? You know, um, are you more comfortable in an office setting or working from home? The initial stages of the coaching process are, are, are uh, you know, separated really on let's talk through those things and get a really clear understanding of the foundation of what we're looking for. Um, once I have an idea of what your goals are, that will unlock what businesses I'd best present to you that are going to align well with your income, lifestyle, wealth, and equity goals. Um, so it's, you know, I, I like to say it's, a, you know, it's a holistic art. It's, you know, where the head meets the heart. You know, people are very emotive and want to go with one direction, but we've got to make sure the unit economics and all of that makes sense, you know, not just for you, but for your family, uh, you know, your, 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 your spouse, your partner, you know, your children to really find out what's going to be the best way to get there. Um, you know, uh, so that's a bit of the holistic part that we dig into at the initial stages of our of our coaching calls. No, I think that's great because again, it's you're, you're doing what's best for the the client that you're working with. Because again, this is a you know it's an investment. You know, like you said, it, it's an, it's an investment of not only their money but their time because this is something that they're going to be dedicating their their life to, and and this could be the the you know the model or the platform for them to fulfill these things that you talked about, the lifestyle, you know, that they want to do certain things with their family, find some more harmony, maybe yeah. perhaps they, a job they were in in their last bit, you know, you know, with working for someone, they were traveling and now they they want a franchise where they can just be in their own backyard and not have to be traveling all the time. Yeah, I think, you know, something I didn't want to skip over is I talked about the avenues, right? There's starting your own business job or business community, any of those are what we coach for, right? Not everyone I work with is set to be a business owner. Not everyone's ready for that step. And some people have a great concept to starting on their own. You know, we delve into that, the portion of, all right, what's it like to join an existing business? And the first thing I'd say between those two are, are your time commitment, right? We've got a lot of people who are experiencing burnout who don't want to start from, you know, the ground floor, want to come into something that's existing, a model with uh, guardrails and, and a proven plan. And that's where this comes in. Um, which is interesting as perspective uh, across what we're looking at. Mm, wow, this is fabulous! I love this, and, and you know, and there's so many franchises out there, and it yeah. can be probably rather, uh, you know, in a way sometimes overwhelming if you know, especially if you're doing this on your own. Talk 100%. about like the, you know how you know as you know helping you know uh, people transitioning either from another business to to a franchise or from the corporate world into franchising why working with somebody like yourself could really make this transition more seamless and and beneficial in the long run that's a great question and what i'd say is i think at last at the last time i looked there are 17,000 registered franchises in the united states wow. right? oh, God. um in, in our portfolio alone we have 40 different verticals that we work with work within outside larger segments of business to business business to consumer and retail if I were someone who was looking at that space, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Or what I would do is 
you know, begin to bind myself to a concept that I think optically looked well. Um, meaning, you know, I, I jokingly say this, it's a great franchise. We don't represent it, but Chick-fil-A, everyone, you know, the lines are long, the demand is there. You know, once you find out what is actually required to get into that franchise, a lot of times that's not what people want from a work-life perspective, from a capital investment. What someone like myself and fellow coaches do is we start at, you know, as I said, with those goals. What are you looking to make? What are you looking to spend? What feels right? Where do you feel comfortable in your day to day? In your last role, what did you love? Right? What did you hate? Let's talk through that. And within that, I'm able to take that 17,000 and narrow it down to three businesses, all different that are going to really resonate with you. And if run appropriately, would deliver on the goals that we talk through. Um, it's, you know, it's an easy way, you know, to narrow down and narrow your focus on the things that are most important. Um, and my job as an independent coach is, is to not be swayed by larger organizations or gimmicks. It's to really say agnostic of what they say, what I know is for you, these are going to be a good fit. Yeah. Um, it really helps kind of bring the focal point in and makes the process a little less daunting, right? Um, uh, and working with a coach, they do have your best interest. Sometimes, not all the time, with independent franchises or organizations, they want you in because they want you in. Um, you know, they always want a good fit, I'll say, but sometimes there might be a better fit somewhere else. Um, so working with someone who's unattached uh, from the outcome is is definitely a benefit. Got it. Wow. That's fabulous. I think it's great. Yeah. Cause it can be overwhelming. And like you said, sometimes you're, you're able to kind of get them to see for what it really is, not what they think it is. And, and then not then get themselves into something that they'll later regret going, well, God, I didn't think it was going to be like this. Yeah, and there could have been something better had I been working with somebody like Liam. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was funny. You mentioned that I just got off a, a, a call beforehand with a client of mine whose friend was placed in a franchise He's doing all right. You know, he's not loving it. You know, and the reason he's not loving it is there's been some fees and unexpected costs that he wasn't fully aware of. Um, and that sometimes happens. I would say, you know, due diligence is really going to quell a lot of those issues. But partnering with someone who can guide you through that and say, this is, you know, from the inception um, all the way to, to going into business, here are the steps that you need to take. You know, it's not just it starts with coaching goes into let's review an FDD, let's see what's in that document, let's see how that applies to you. Let's start a work on a business plan. And let's look at that, you know, uh, not just at three months, six months, but a year, two years, three years out to get a really good idea. Um, and I help along that process. Not all of it is done by me, it's done with some kind of trusted financial counterparts. But it's an idea to make a really clear view of what this looks like day one, you know, 30 days, 60 days, a year, two years, three years out. So that you're not in a position where you're surprised or you're not in a position where you're running out of capital, that these businesses are going to align best with your skills. Um, you know, the thing I say to my clients when we get to the point of looking at businesses, because there are a number of meetings that happen up until that point to get a good understanding is there's really, you know, two things you have to look at. One, can you envision yourself as an owner, right? If this business has the, fin the best unit economics ever and you could be a millionaire, but you have to work 80 hours a week. Is that going to work, right? There's that, you know, time versus money play out that we all deal with. Not saying that that happens, but if you can't see yourself in that position, then it's not the right opportunity for you. We gotta, we've gotta move on, and that kind of goes back to there are more options in the hopper for you to evaluate. Let's make sure that the first step is I can say doing this. Yeah. Everyone wants to golf, you know. Not everyone. A yeah, lot not yet. Like but I know you're saying. But we're not looking for ho hobbies. We're looking for careers. So there's there's definitely an interplay there that we've got to be cognizant yeah. of. What would you say? Because you kind of alluded to this already, and, and maybe you've already answered it, but I just want to make sure, because I did hear you mention a little bit about a timeline, but what would typically be the timeline when you bring somebody in to kind of onboard them, get to know them, and then source which franchise or franchises may fit and align and then obviously making the choice and then somebody now executing to go through what typically would be a time frame on something like that on average i know it it's obviously going to vary based upon absolutely varies i'd say the general range is from you know start to consummation of an agreement between 3 to 6 months yep. uh, so it, it's a thoughtful process and the reason that it is that way is you know the initial portion it's it's one on one coaching um i coach my clients to find out those goals uh, to really bring them the best businesses at that point I introduce them to those business representatives so they can hear from them 
why that business is going to work for them. And then beyond that, there's another layer where they'll speak with other owners, either new, existing, to find out, all right, regardless of what Liam says, regardless of what this franchisor or business owner says, what do other owners say? Um, and then we talk through financing. So that that whole process takes on average between three to six months. Um, you know, can move a lot faster if someone's highly motivated, can also move, you know, a lot slower uh, depending on everyone's pace. Yeah. Uh, but that's the average time frame. Wow. Yeah. That's fabulous. So three to six months, and that sounds about right. You know, again, you know, you're never jumping into anything right away. You got to do your due diligence, but it's always good to know that you have an unbiased third party, someone who understands the process this this type of business model and then again you know getting to know what what's important to people even if sometimes we're not sure what that really means because there's probably people don't even know what what that means to them sometimes we're learning together right all right so we don't we don't like this i got it and you know i, I missed the bark up the missed the mark on that one um but uh yeah it, it's it's a it's a process that's meant to not rush anybody into a decision that they're going to later regret right uh, i get nowhere by placing people in businesses the, what they don't succeed right my success is only as is only as successful as the clients i put into business and that's really where it is so that's where the due diligence comes in and that's sometimes where you know i have uncomfortable conversations that says you know what i know that we're here and i know that you're excited about this but i'm not sure that this is right for you at this point and vice versa you know, it's really a quality process to make sure that those goals, needs, and expectations are going to be met by whatever you do next. Uh, yeah. You know, in this case, it's business ownership. Now, this is probably, you know, a typical question, but I'm going to address it anyway, because, you know, some people may already know the answer, but there are probably some people that still have to hear it. You know, think if there, somebody getting into business for the first time, you know, what would be the advantages and disadvantages of going a franchise model over starting a business from scratch? I think that the biggest advantage I would say to a franchise model is it's a proven business model, right? It's something that's existed. It's replicated. Um, you can duplicate it and go somewhere. Within that, there's guardrails. There's going to be business plans. There's going to be inherent support, whether that be a call center to take inbound appointments. It's not just you Someone's going to help you run your marketing, your advertising. You're going to have, um, you know, day one, a community of other owners that you can source ideas, what's working for you, what's what's not working. You can get that a lot in the independent space as well, but it's going to take a lot more networking. And also, you know, your peers are also going to be your competition in that space. So the, the level of information you're getting back is, is going to be a little bit guarded. Um, beyond that, I'd say, you know, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself, which kind of yeah. speaks to that community as well. Um, and I, I would say that proven method, that community, those are really what sticks out. You know, I think independently speaking, the benefits of that, you know, you're not going to pay any sort of, um, you're not going to pay a uh, franchise fee. You're not going to have to pay any royalties. There's other, you know, there's other advantages to going at your own way. The profits are going to flow directly to you. Um, I think that what appealed to me about the franchise business, because my business is a franchise, um, was the ability to ramp quickly and still work a 40 hour work week. Um, as I looked at, for me personally, it's not the same for everyone, what I wanted. I came from a career where I worked 60 or 70 hours a week for almost 20 years commuting to the city and back. I wanted a job. I wanted a nine to five. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted with a lunch hour or a lunch break, you know, which I yeah. also didn't do. Um, and when I looked at my options, you know, coaching on my own without that support, it just seemed a lot less realistic. Um, doesn't mean it's not doable, but that's again, where those goals come back in. If you're leaving corporate America for burnout to spend more time with your family, uh, to have more flexibility of schedule, to take more vacations, that's not necessarily going to lend itself to an independent business because you're the CFO, CEO, COO, CMO, HR, you know, compliance manager, you're always on. Um, in a franchise model, some of those roles get absorbed by the larger community and, and, and make that work-life balance a bit more possible. Again, I say always, I'm not trying to make one sound better than the other. Oh, okay, exactly. Yeah, it's always in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. And that's what we discover. It's, you know, we, we talk through those three pathways. You know, maybe it's a job, maybe it's an independent business, or maybe it's a franchise. Let's find out, you know, proof of concept, which one's going to work best for you. And, it, and I guess it, it could be a level of risk, right? You know, kind of mitigate the risk somewhat, you know, because again, it's a proven model and exactly. doesn't mean everything's guaranteed. I mean, you know, anything can go another way, but probably less likely 
compared to starting from something from scratch that can, you know, there could be more potential bottlenecks and hiccups and so on. It's just, you know, it, it, and anyone who's gone through a new process knows it takes the time to learn a process, right? And part of an existing system, there's a manual, you know, you kind of know what happens, someone to go to when you're on your own, you know, you're figuring that out, you know, live in the moment, um, which can be exhilarating, can also be stressful. Um, so it, it, it's something to evaluate and it also depending on what you want to do, right? Um, if something that you want to do is very consultative in nature and it's very niche and you have that background, then maybe that's the best way to go. You know, and if you can't see outside of that, then let's go do that. Let's find you a business coach who's going to come up and work with you on realistic goals. You know, the same concepts that we talk through. OK, let's move it that direction so that you can keep those same milestones. What's important about it is the process agnostic of business ownership does one thing that I think a lot of people overlook or say that they do, but they don't do. And that's be very tangible with the goals that they need for the next opportunity, right? Everything is everything. Jobs are great. But if you don't know how much money yeah. you want, if you don't know what your work-life balance is, the wealth and equity component of what you're trying to do, everything that comes at you, you, you don't, you need a level playing field to judge. And this process gives them that. So even with that, when I have clients who come back and say, hey, listen, Liam, thank you. I know we're looking at businesses, but I got a job offer. My first questions are, all right, is it, is it, is it making what you want? You know, what are the hours? You know, are you going to contribute to the things that we talked about? And if it is, you know, carry on wayward son, that's a great goal for you. I'm happy for you. If not, are those things that you're giving up really worth it? You know? Yeah. Um, and if not, uh, then maybe we should reconsider. Yeah. No, nice. No, this is some great, great wisdom. What would you recommend, you know, if, you know, people listening right now or those listening, what would be you know, like I said, you know, they've, you, they've, they got now a better understanding of how, why working with a coach uh, like yourself would be beneficial, save them a lot of time, money, get them more clarity. What are some other points that you can conclude today's show with that could really, you know, that you could plant, you know, like a, an idea in somebody's mind around, again, the benefits of, of running a franchise you know, what that can mean in, in, in their life and even maybe the, creating a legacy for their family. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that the biggest thing I'd say, and it's something I think a lot about is the opportunity cost, right? Uh, an opportunity cost in this is what's the opportunity cost of going out and, and starting a business versus continuing to look for a job to no avail, right? This is a fast track way. It does come. There are costs associated with it. You know, we have businesses as low as 40,000 and as high as a million. You know, I find a sweet spot between 75 and 125. But if you're able to invest that in a business and recoup that investment in a year or two and get to a level of income, you know, this is something you might want to consider yeah. versus continually applying for jobs and not getting there. Uh, you know, the older we get, the more experienced we get. It seems sometimes that the job market's not working in our favor. I think for people who are, you know, maybe a little bit hopeless with what to do next, feeling like they've been, you know, can't get back in, there are other things out there. You know, it's not the easiest it's to get into, but it's not hard if you have, you know, uh, if you've got a good head and uh, and some resources at your disposal. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. Well, we hope everybody listening here is taking notes. This is some great information from Liam. We're going to highly encourage that you reach out. He's going to be sharing here shortly how you can get in touch with him. And again, you know, his uh, uh, entrepreneur source has got a wealth of information. So you're going to learn a little bit more about that. Any final comments, Liam, before we, uh, you know, sh uh, I I'm going to ask you to share where, where people could get in contact with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be a part of this, Chris. So thank you very much for that. The one thing I'd say is, you know, reach out. All of the coaches at the Entrepreneur Cells, myself included, work with our clients for free. Um, uh, so it can't hurt to speak with us. Yeah, can't hurt. We, well, we highly encourage that everybody and share this with somebody you care about, somebody that's looking, considering moving away from a job into a potential franchise. Again, get to know Liam. Liam, what is the best way people can get in touch with you and get to know you? Um, you can shoot me an email. My email is lhanley at esourcecoach.com um, or shoot me a text 516-400-5284. That's 516-400-5284. Awesome. Well, we're going to make sure that we're going to have that, that contact information in terms of the website, the email, where you can contact Liam direct. Again, if you have any questions, you could also reach out to us and we'll make sure to connect uh, that question with Liam to address 
anything that is important to you, we highly encourage you again, reach out and get to know Liam and the Entrepreneur Source. Liam, thank you so much for being here today. We greatly appreciate you and taking time out of your schedule to be with us. Thank you very much. This was awesome. Sounds great. Well, listeners, we want to thank you each and every week joining us here at Business Influencers. Again, we promise each and every week to bring subject matter experts like Liam in, again, to help move your level of influence up to the next level, which will help boost your brand and business simultaneously. A lot of people underestimate the power of influence and how this can really sustain and help grow not only you personally, but your brand and business and leave a legacy, even to the point when you go to exit that business at some point, whether again, if it's a franchise, uh, your own business, or again, you're working with someone else. You can never not have enough influence. Till then, everybody have a great rest of your week and we'll see you next week. 